Good evening, Patriots, and welcome back to another episode of You, Me, and MSD. Before we get started this evening, we would like to take a moment to extend our thoughts and prayers to the Fincher family. Dr. Fincher is unable to be with us. I am your host, Carissa Lacey, and joining us this evening is our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Mr. Hugh Emmett. Mr. Emmett, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. Tonight, we will be discussing our on-campus learning experiences, and we have several questions, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Question number one, Mr. Emmett, are there COVID funds available for all teachers and students to be tested for the virus before school starts? At this time, there are not. Um, with uh, this situation, these decisions are actually being made at the state level, not at the district level. And uh, those funds have not been made available for teachers or students. Now, I believe the governor did announce earlier this week that um, some antigen testing uh, would be uh, made available at the county health offices by the time school started. And it's my understanding that he has said that those should be prioritized for uh, school personnel and students, but they will not be available at the school. Will there be an open house before school starts? And if so, will my child meet their teacher and see their classroom? We're currently working on a plan for open house. Uh, as you know, there are several guidelines that we have to follow that have been put forth by the Arkansas Department of Health. So those plans are not finalized. What we are hoping to do is be able to have an in-person open house for those who are choosing face-to-face -face instruction and some sort of virtual open house for those who choose online only. At a bare minimum, we will definitely do an in-person open house for kindergarten students and work diligently to do the same for students who are entering a particular building for the first time. Will the school day be structured in the same way as in the past as long as school remains open? And will school hours remain the same? Yes, our plan is that school on a day-to-day -day basis will look just like it has in previous years. Um, now, obviously, uh, we will be in a uh, time of monitor and adjust mm -hmm. more so than ever before, but the school day, the uh, busing routes, um, everything will look just like it has in the past, uh, or at least that will be our goal. Gotcha. Will temperatures be taken for all students and teachers daily? No, we will not be doing that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as uh, the science continues to evolve mm -hmm. uh, more and more, um, you know, that is being questioned if that's even a good idea right. uh, because so many um, are asymptomatic that may not have a fever or just because you do have a fever doesn't mean you are uh, positive for COVID-19. What we will be doing, we will have a self-check Okay. that we will ask all uh, employees and we will ask all parents to go through with their students. Uh, we'll have several things listed. Uh, one of those will be uh, a fever. Uh, and so that will take place on a daily basis prior to anyone coming to school. Of course, if they answer yes, uh, at that point, we will ask them to stay home. Okay. Next question. Will students be taught how to properly wash their hands and how often will they be required to wash them? Yes, they will be taught how to properly wash their hands. Um, anyone who has spent time in uh, a school setting, in particular elementary or lower elementary schools, uh, know that uh, the start of school uh, primarily uh, is spent getting routines in place. Obviously, one of those routines this year, more so than ever, will be washing hands. Um, in addition to that, there will be um, hand sanitizer placed in various places throughout the buildings that uh, there will also be routines put in place uh, for the use of the hand sanitizer as well. Thank you. Will the high school and junior high still have after school programs? They will. Again, as I said earlier, uh, we want this to be as normal of a school year, school day as we possibly can. However, while offering those after school programs, we are still going to have to abide by the guidelines that are put forth by the Department of Health. And uh, I, as 
many of you know, those continue to evolve. Uh, but yes, we will still offer those things. They may just look a little bit different than what they have in the past. Thank you. Uh, piggybacking off of that, will there be events at schools such as awards assemblies, programs, pep rallies, and holiday parties? And will students be allowed to go on field trips? I would like to say yes to all of those things. Okay. Uh, but the truth is right now, the Department of Health guidelines will not allow for that. Okay. And so as much as we would like to do that, uh, I think initially the answer uh, will be no. However, as soon as the Department of Health allows for those things, mm -hmm. then the, of course the answer would be absolutely yes. Will general education and technical centers at ASU Mid-South still be offered and will they be on campus or virtual? That will still be offered. Uh, we are in communication with ASU Mid-South on a weekly basis. We have a weekly Zoom with them as, as these things are in planning. Uh, they are modifying their plans uh, as we are, but they have, uh, they have a plan to offer a blended approach just like we do. Some will be face-to-face, -face, some will be online only, and then some will be a combination of those uh, two um, ideas. We can post uh, information on our website that they have shared with us uh, in terms of what offerings will be offered and which way they will be offered. Uh, but my best advice would be to contact ASU Mid-South as they are in control of those decisions. Do you have a contact person you would suggest that parents ask for? I do not, but when we put the uh, post on our website, uh, the information that they give us will be there. So if, they, if they've identified a contact person, it will be on that. Thank you. Our next segment of questions, Mr. Emmett, will deal with masks. Will the school be providing masks for all students? We will. We will be providing uh, one washable mask for all students. As a matter of fact, I happen to have one with me. Uh, <clears throat> they, of course, are very stylish mm -hmm. uh, and have our Patriot logo on them. And so uh, we will be doing that. Okay. In addition to that, uh, we will have disposable masks available um, in the outside instance when a student forgets their mask that we can provide that to them. Okay, thank you. What ages of students will be required to wear masks? We are requiring that of all students kindergarten through 12th grade. Are there dress code requirements for masks or can the students and faculty wear any color or pattern and will neck gaiters be allowed as masks? At this time, we are just asking that the masks that are worn uh, meet our other dress code criteria. Uh, obviously, there are some um, things that would be inappropriate. Uh, symbols, words, things of that nature that we would not allow on a t-shirt or something of that nature. We will not allow those items on a mask either. But outside of that, uh, there there is no um, a specific color or anything like that that uh, a mask has to be. Uh, neck gaiters do qualify. Obviously, we would prefer a face mask. Mm -hmm. um, and again, those will be provided by the school. But uh, in a pinch, yes, neck gaiters will be allowed, assuming they're worn appropriately, covering both the mouth and nose. Okay. Mr. M, in our next segment of questions, we'll deal with classroom. With some students doing online learning, will class sizes be smaller or will there be fewer classes per grade? And what is the maximum number of students per classroom? The maximum number of students per classroom requirement has not changed. Okay. However, it is very likely that face-to-face -face classes will be smaller mm -hmm. because some students are choosing to learn online. And so there is not a set number in a particular class that will depend upon how many students from that particular class chose to learn online. Um, but in general, yes, the classes will be smaller. How will classrooms be set up in regards to social distancing? We are going to social distance throughout our day in every setting to the best of our ability. Okay. In terms of a specific classroom, it will actually depend upon how many students are in that class. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, if there are 10 students in a class, we can better social distance than if there are 
20 students in that class. Again, we won't know that specific number until we see how many students from any given class have chosen to learn online. So let's talk about cleaning and sanitizing of the classrooms. How will that look like in making sure that all our classrooms are cleaned and disinfected and sanitized each day? The classrooms will be disinfected daily by our custodial staff. In addition to that, classroom teachers will be provided with a disinfectant that at their choosing, they can use during the day. In addition to cleaning of the classrooms, tell me about cleaning common areas such as the bathroom, auxiliary classroom for the library. Yes, those spaces obviously will be disinfected daily as well, just like classrooms. However, because they are such high traffic areas, they will also be cleaned periodically throughout the school day. In talking about devices as we did for the virtual learning, will the students need a personal device from home to be brought to school each day? They will not. Uh, obviously, if a student chooses to learn online, mm -hmm. then they're going to need a device. But in terms of at school every day, no, they will not. Thank you. Looking at lunch, will students eat lunch in the cafeteria or in their classroom? We're going to have a combination of both of those things going on. And it may vary slightly from building to building because all of our buildings are not set up the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and some students may eat in the lunch room. Uh, a few days a week and eat in their classroom a few days a week. Okay. With students eating in the cafeteria, what procedures will be in place for them entering and exiting that area? Every building is working on their plan separately. And so they will look similar but different at the same time. Uh, again, we are taking every precaution we can to social distance, which when we can means we will be entering through uh, different doors than we will be exiting. Okay. Can I come eat lunch with my child? At this time, no. Uh, not only are we not going to allow parents uh, to join their child for lunch, we are actually um, not going to allow visitors. Okay. Um, and I think the reasons for that are, are well known. Our next segment of questions will deal with the COVID outbreak. This is a question from a teacher. What will happen if one of my students tests positive and what if someone in my child's class tests positive? The answer to that is actually determined by the Department of Health. That is something that the district does not uh, get to make the call on. Now, there are processes in place uh, that we must follow, but there are several different categories um, that the Department of Health defines uh, from what they call close contact to probable close contact mm -hmm. to secondary contact and we have uh, different rules that we must follow for each of those categories. Okay. Uh, in addition, um, we are not always allowed to <sighs> share information um, as much as we might like or that the public may like for us to due to HIPAA laws. And so in terms of when someone tests positive, um, they will be quarantined for 14 days or until they have been released by the Department of Health to return to work or school. Uh, in terms of a close contact or a probable close contact, once an individual has been identified uh, as falling in one of those categories, they are also required to quarantine for 14 days or until the Department of Health uh, releases them. Uh, again, uh, this is an example of one of the many things that continues to evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are following the guidance of the Arkansas Department of Health on this issue. If there's a COVID outbreak on one of our campuses, will the other campuses have to shut down too? Well, my answer is going to be similar to the previous question. Uh, at this time, we have been told that we do not get to make that decision. Uh, that will be a decision made by the Department of Health um, in conjunction with us, but it has been made very clear to us that the Department of Health will be the one that makes that decision. As I understand it at this time, 
Uh, they are going to consider uh, multiple factors, um, and the answer may not always be the same from district to district. If and when the students that come to school in person convert to online school, will they be emerged into a virtual program or will these continue to operate as two separate programs? Well, they actually will never be two separate programs. Um, just like everything else, we have had multiple plans, but, but where we are as we are nearing the start of school is that our teachers will be teaching students um, simultaneously, if you will, both face-to-face -face and online. And so if we get to the point where a campus or the entire district is closed down, then our face-to-face -face students will simply convert to online. They will have the same teacher and be taught in the same method as those who are already online. Mr. Emmett, this concludes the submission of questions this evening dealing with on-campus learning. Is there anything else you would like to add on this topic? First, I would like to say thank you for having me here today. Thank you for joining uh, us. And we very much appreciate the questions from our patrons, as this is certainly a, a time that we've uh, never gone through before. Uh, with that being said, the probably the most important thing I would like to say, as you referenced earlier, we would like to send our thoughts and prayers out to Dr. Fincher and his family. Uh, we are all hoping for a um, speedy recovery. And I think the uh, maybe the one thing to say, um, which we brought on with Dr. Fincher as our new slogan, One Patriot, One Community, uh, I don't think there's ever been a time in this district that that has been more appropriate than uh, right now with all the things that we are facing. So uh, maybe I can just close by saying one patriot, one community. We would like to thank Mr. Emmett for joining us for tonight's episode of You, Me, and MSD. Thank you again and have a great evening.